everyone, and welcome back to the MFT YouTube channel. It's Carolyn here, and I'm stopping by today to share another interactive card process video with you. If you follow my blog at all, I created this project for the December countdown, and it featured the new Magical Dragon stamp set paired with the launch party dynamics. I promised then that I'd film a video showing you how I made the speech bubble pop up as the main character flies through the skies. So today's video will feature the new Zippy Zebra stamp set and I'll use the launch party dynamics to animate the card. Let's get started. I trimmed a four inch by five and a quarter inch Blue Breeze image panel, and I'm inking up the new crosshatch polka dot background stamp with some Sweet Tooth pigment ink, and I'll stamp that onto the Blue Breeze panel to create some interest and texture. As I mentioned before, I'll be using the scooter riding zebra and one of the sentiments from the new Zippy Zebra stamp set. Off camera, I die cut some limelight cardstock using the Grassy Hills Dynamics and a sidewalk from cement cardstock using the city block dynamics. I also die cut all of the parts of the mechanism using the launch party dynamics. The pull tab and slider caps were cut from limelight cardstock, the gasket and launching strip were cut from acetate, and the pull tab collar was cut from text weight printer paper. I'll start by adhering the shortest grass piece to the sidewalk by adhering some tape runner adhesive to the top portion of the back of the grass. Then I'll use my grid pad to align the grass with the sidewalk. You'll notice that I use my grid pad throughout this video. I can't imagine my crafty life without it. I've temporarily positioned the taller of the grass pieces onto the image panel, and then I'll place the assembled grass and sidewalk piece on top of that, aligning the side and bottom edges. Then I'll mark the position of the sidewalk piece with my pencil. This will help me position the assembled mechanism so that everything is hidden. I'll position the pull tab onto the larger grass piece beneath that marked line. I want the pull tab to extend beyond the right edge about a quarter of an inch, and once it's in place, I'll mark the left end of the pull tab and a few marks on the top and the bottom. This is where I'll center the die to cut a channel for the mechanism. I need that channel to be a bit longer than what the die provides, so I'll cut it once and then reposition the die to extend further towards the right end of the panel, and I'll die cut the remainder of the channel with the second pass of my die cut machine. I do this to make sure my launching mechanism has enough room to travel and launch far enough for the zebra to move forward and the speech bubble to be positioned correctly. Now I need to die cut that channel a second time, this time on the image panel. So I'll align the bottom and side edges of the grass in the image panel and I'll place the channel die inside the previously cut channel. I'll use my pencil to mark the inside aperture of the die and this will help me position the channel die where it needs to be in order to duplicate the channel cut. You'll notice that I secured the grass and the image panel together with some washi tape so that the pieces don't slide around while I'm making my pencil marks. Once I've marked the inside of that channel die, I'll position the die onto the image panel and I'll die cut it once and then again to complete the elongated channel, just as we did with the grass channel. Next, I'll attach the acetate launcher strip to the pull tab using a brad. I didn't use a special brad, just one that I happen to have in my stash. I'll push the brad through the holes and bend the prongs to the back of the pull tab. I've positioned the pull tab onto the image panel and centered it over the top of the channel. I'll temporarily secure it in place with a piece of washi tape, and then I'll slide that launcher strip up so that the end of the track sits just above the top of the pull tab. I'll mark this end position with my pencil, and then I'll use the 1 8 inch hole die that comes with the launch party dynamics to die cut that hole off camera. I'm using my tweezers to carefully remove the washi tape and die so as not to damage the panel. This takes a bit of patience, something I'm not very good at. Okay, I'll center and position the pull tab onto the image panel and I'll secure with a few pieces of washi tape. And then I'll flip the panel over to the back. I can tell that the pull tab is centered correctly because the center of the brad prongs is centered and towards the end of the channel. I've adhered some double-sided tape to both sides of two slider elements, and I'm using my tweezers to remove the liner paper from one side of one of the slider elements. I'll adhere the slider element to the pull tab through the slider channel so that it's positioned just to the left of the brad prongs. I'll remove the other liner paper and adhere one of the slider element caps. Next, I'm folding the pull tab collar on the provided score lines, and I'll adhere the ends together with a glue pen. This pull tab collar will help keep the pull tab aligned without the bulk of foam tape. It's honestly the best way I've found to keep most interactive mechanisms stabilized. Once the ends of the collar are adhered together, I'll add a little more liquid glue to the back of the collar, 
and I'll use my tweezers to slide it onto the end of the pull tab and secure it to the image panel. I'll give it a good rub just to make sure that it's good and stuck. Now that the pull tab is in place, I can slide the launcher strip up so that the end of the track is aligned with the previously die cut hole. I'll place the acetate gasket on top of that hole and I'll push another brad through all three holes and secure the prongs on the back of the image panel. You can see here that I'm adjusting the pressure of the brad. I needed it to have a little more slack to make sure that the launcher strip could move freely. Now I can adhere the larger grass panel to the image panel with a double layer of foam squares, being very careful to not place adhesive in any areas that would interfere with the movement of the mechanism. Next, I've trimmed a quarter inch by two inch acetate strip and I've adhered double-sided tape to one end. I'm removing the liner paper from the tape and I'll slip the sticky end of that strip through the channel and adhere to the bottom edge of the pull tab. This is what I'll adhere our zebra to. Before I assemble anything else, I need to do a bit of stamping. I've placed the grass and sidewalk panel into my MISTI and I'm inking up my sentiment with some black licorice hybrid ink. And now I can adhere that panel to the image panel with a single layer of foam squares, again making sure that none of the adhesive interferes with the movement of the mechanism. I stamped, colored, and die cut my scooter zebra off camera, and I'm adhering him to that acetate strip with a foam square. And a test run of the mechanism shows that everything is working so far. But I like the positioning of my zebra, so I feel comfortable trimming off the excess acetate from the strip. Now I need to figure out the positioning of the launcher strip, which is where the speech bubble will be attached. As I pull the pull tab, I can see that the launcher strip can actually launch beyond where I want it to be. So I'll move the pull tab until the strip is located where I want it, and then I'll adhere the speech bubble with a foam square adhered to the strip near the end of the track. It takes a little bit of trial and error to get the perfect fit, but once I do, I'm ready to lock it in place. By the way, the speech bubble was created using the Peekaboo Wheel Dynamics, and a sentiment from the more essential sentiment stamp set. Okay, I'm ready to lock the launcher strip in place so that it doesn't over rotate beyond the zebra. Now that I have it where I want it, I'll flip the panel over, remove the liner paper from one side of the other slider element, and I'll place it through the channel and adhere it to the pull tab at the left end of the channel. Then I'll remove the other liner paper from the double sided tape and cap it off with the other green cap. And then I'll trim off the excess launcher strip with my scissors. But here's where I had a bit of a problem. It bugged me that I could still see part of the speech bubble peeking out behind the grass. So I die cut another grass strip to fit, making sure that it would cover the rogue speech bubble. And then I adhered it to the back grassy hill and behind the sidewalk with some tape runner adhesive. Problem solved. That's one of the things that I love about interactive cards. They're precise, but also not perfect in every way. As I create my designs, I'm always looking ahead for the pitfalls. Most can easily be remedied with a random die cutter sentiment strip. Thankfully, this was one of those easy fixes. Okay, now I'm ready to add the finishing touches to my card. I'm adhering the assembled image panel to a Blue Breeze horizontal top folding card base with one layer of foam squares. And another quick check of the mechanism shows that it's working perfectly. I'm adding a movement prompt to the end of the pull tab using the word pull from the interactive label stamp set that's been inked up with black licorice hybrid ink. As I looked at my finished card, I felt like it needed another point of interest on the blue background to balance things out. So I die cut some clouds from smooth white cardstock using the Cute Cloud Outlines Dynamics. I'll adhere them with a foam square and tape runner adhesive just above the zebra's head. Now all is right with the world. Well friends, that'll do it for my video this month. I hope you enjoyed it and that you'll give this dual movement launch party mechanism a try for yourself. I've listed all of the MFT products that I use below in the description box. If you have any questions at all, please leave them below and I'll do my best to get you the answers that you need. Be sure and subscribe to the MFT YouTube channel so that you don't miss any of the crafty deliciousness that we share here on a regular basis. And until next time, have an awesome day.